Before we set out on a space journey beyond the boundaries of our system, we have to decide on the manner of selecting a planet that resembles the Earth most from thousands of candidates. What should be the parameters of this fascinating world and what should we take into consideration first? It goes without saying that planets favorable for the genesis and sustenance of life have always posed considerable interest to scientists. However, it is no easy matter to single out suitable celestial bodies among a great number of those discovered by now to have clear-cut selection criteria scientists worked out the so-called Earth Similarity Index, or ESI, for short. It is based on several principal parameters a planet's radius, density, and average surface temperature. This combination makes it possible to calculate the object's mass, approximately estimate its chemical composition, gravitation level, whether or not there is an atmosphere, and if there is analysis, some of its characteristics. It also helps establish if there is liquid water on the planet's surface and other information. Today, we invite you to join us on a fantastic journey to the most incredible ones. There are countless unusual celestial bodies scattered around the vast expanses of the universe. A combination of various factors has turned some of them into mysterious anomalies, exceptional even by space standards. Some of these objects are amazing exoplanets, strikingly similar to Earth, while others have never seen sunlight or experienced heat. There are worlds having continuous sandstorms, while others are covered by a vast ocean, whose bottom is made of blocks of glowing ice. At the same time, in the depths of multicolored nebulae, there are giant stars capable of swallowing whole planetary systems and millions of light years away from them. Jellyfish galaxies cut through the expanses of space with their shining stellar tentacles. The third category, it contains celestial bodies with a high ESI that is over 0.7. All of these planets are beyond the solar system. According to estimates, the size of these worlds and the conditions on their surfaces are potentially close to those of the Earth. Among these planets, there is one which resembles ours most, and it lies just 12 and a half light years away from the Earth. This amazing world orbits Garden Star, a small red dwarf discovered in 2003. This star is 1,370 times dimmer than the Sun, this means that it cannot be observed with a naked eye, even though it lies quite close to the Earth. The mass of this tiny star is roughly 9% that of the Sun, and its radius is about 5% bigger than that of Jupiter. Gravitational forces are barely strong enough to maintain the thermonuclear reaction in the star's interior. That is why the surface temperature is just 2,900 Kelvin, or roughly 2,630 degrees Celsius, as is the case for all red dwarves, D. Garden Star's habitable zone is comparatively narrow and located very close to it. Celestial objects whose ESI is within 0.5 to 0.7 fall into the second category. These objects resemble our home planet noticeably more. They're mostly rocky worlds with relatively moderate temperatures, but it can also be ocean planets and even some large satellites. Incidentally, a high Earth similarity index per se does not warrant favorable conditions for life. For example, quite often, low-mass planets are incapable of retaining a dense enough atmosphere while their magnetic field is too weak to protect the surface from lethally dangerous radiation. Other celestial bodies yet may happen to be located too close to their parent star, and so get tidally locked. Of course, all these factors greatly reduce the chances of life's genesis and sustenance. The standard of this index is the Earth with its parameters assumed is ideal, and its CSI equaling 1. Based on the Earth Similarity Index, all the objects known to us conventionally fall into three categories. The first one is objects whose ESI is under 0.5. These are, for the most part, gas and dice giants as well as extremely hot or in the contrary cold objects 
This is the category most of the solar system planets and satellites fall into. It takes just one characteristic to greatly exceed the maximum permissible values for a celestial object to be unfavorable for the genesis and sustenance of life. Let's take Venus, for instance. The radius and mass of this celestial body are very close to those of the Earth, however, due to its close proximity to the Sun and a dense atmosphere, its surface temperature is extremely high. That is why, in spite of a close similarity to the Earth on the face of it, Venus's ESI is not high at just 0.44. Of course, there being any life on its surface is totally out of the question. Back in 2019, two exoplanets were detected in its system after continuous observations of the star's proper motion. Interestingly, one of them lies beyond the star's habitable zone and the other within, the outer planet dubbed Tea Garden C, follows an almost ideal circular orbit around the system's center, with the orbit's radius 0.045 astronomical units. It is completed every 11 and one half days. It is presumably a rocky celestial body with a mass 11% bigger than that of the Earth. Its radius is estimated to be approximately three and one half percent bigger than that of our planet. Unfortunately, conditions on Tea Garden C's surface are far from hospitable. Due to the low luminosity of its parent star, the object enjoys 63% less energy than what the Earth receives from the Sun. As a result, the planet's surface temperature is gauged at 47 degrees Celsius below zero. On average, which is too low for life sustenance, at least in the forms we know it, Still, the chance of there being vast oceans of salty water concealed under a the clair of ice on Tea Garden C, as is the case with Jupiter's satellites, for instance, shouldn't be ruled out. As for the inner planet, it is dubbed Tea Garden B. It is actually this planet that is the most Earth-like object of all those discovered to date. Its CSI is 0.95, which is just 0.05 less than the standard ideal value of our Earth, this celestial body lies 0 0.0.025 astronomical units away from its star, and it takes it roughly five days to complete a full orbit around it. By following a practically circular orbit, the exoplanet is constantly in its star's habitable zone, and it receives 15% more radiation from it than the Earth from the Sun. According to some estimates, Tea Garden B's mass is just 5% more than that of our planet. As for its radius, it differs from that of the Earth by a minuscule ratio, which means that the gravitation value is also quite close to what we're used to on our home planet. This makes it logical to assume that the inner makeup of the exoplanet is highly likely to be similar to that of the Earth. What do you think about this? Write down your views in the comments section. If you like the video, then like and share it with your friends and space enthusiasts. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get interesting videos. Interesting.